Welcome back, guys. It's game two, and you guys saw a real ugly game one. All Georgie running over a loading. Glad they checked in with me, but yep, I'm here. They can do their thing. It's a loading on the bottom again, and Georgie on the top again. Once again, a live narration. Georgie up a game. Zapdos and Titar standard leads for both guys. And they're both thinking about what to do. Baton Pass comes down for a Loden, probably to a Bulky Water, you'd think, or to a Skarm, either or. We see that Titar stayed in here and did not go for Focus Punch, so you would think it's just going to be a Rock Slide or an Ice Beam coming would be the, the two sensible things. Here's Skarm, and it's actually Toxic, so good thing a Loden did not go to something like a Swampert there. Surprise Toxic from Georgie. Fire Blast and Spikes, respectively. Fire Blast does a lot there, 61%. Skarm obviously would not live another, and he's going to protect and eat another Fire Blast in doing so, but still 6 PP there, and he still would not live another, so he's got to be careful. Does have the one layer down, so it's been a relatively even transaction. Skarm's lost about half its health, which is probably a fair price for getting a spike down. And now they're both figuring out what they want to do from here. It's Elodin taking the time, possibly debating if it's worth it to get another spike down. He goes to his own T-Tar. Good prediction for Georgie, knowing there would be a switch going for Toxic. That was the right move, but no justice. He does get the miss on the 85-15 against the opposing tower that had been unrevealed. Hidden power there, that's got to be grass. HP Bug would have done more, and it is revealed to be a mixed set from Georgie. He has shown Toxic Fire Blast and now Brick Break. 95% that does to the opposing tar, and Illudin once again, as he was in Game 1, on the back foot. Huge damage there. Now granted, Illudin does have the faster T-Tar, so he could go first and try whatever it is he wants to try. Finally, Georgie does not make the right prediction. He goes Fire Blast here, so he obviously thought... I mean, it would have killed the T-Tar either way had it stayed in, but he was trying to catch a Meta or Jirachi, some kind of resistance that was coming in. Instead, it is Dugtrio, and that's going to get him with Earthquake. So, Elodin actually does take the lead here, but it's kind of like a, an air quotes lead. The Tyranitar is very low on his end. Skarm not in great health. Dugtrio not in great health. And here comes the Prickler. Speak of the devil, Sandvale. This has been a recurring th theme throughout the tournament. I don't know if this is Veil or Double Veil, uh, but we have at least one. We have at least Cacturn here. This has been an ongoing issue throughout the tour. We've already seen a lot of appearances. Gligar in particular has seemed really problematic throughout this tour. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Georgie may or may not have that. But in the meantime, he's got a cack turn. He's spiking up. They both have a lair now. And that is going to effectively kill the Tyranitar that will die as it comes in on those spikes next time around. Unless there's a rapid spinner that has been unrevealed for a loading. Spikes lair number two coming down, courtesy of Skarm. Cat turn, of course, spiking up as almost every set does. Spikes number two and three, respectively. Cat turn, if it gets blown away here, is going to get to spike up first. That's exactly what is attempting to happen. But Whirlwind is going to miss, of course, thanks to Sandvale. There's Protect and Leech Seed, respectively, and probably going to try again with the Whirlwind. Leech Seed going to connect with Skarm, and Whirlwind does connect this time unusual build here of Cacturn. This Pokemon not typically seen on the Veil vale teams. We have a Vaporeon that's going to go for an immediate protect and he's going to be wrong and that's going to allow a free switch in to Zapdos for Elodin and Claydol is going to come in. That is not what Elodin wanted to see. Not only is that going to come in for free on the Thunderbolt but he's going to get a rapid spin off as well and undo all that progress. Get rid of three layers of spikes here with the rapid spin. No ghost comes in to block it. Great turn for Georgie. Comes in for free and then removes all three spikes. The only consequence of that, a 42% hidden power. Not a big deal. So it's Thunder Wave and Wish, respectively. There's at least one, if not double Wish here. Vaporeon may have it as well for Georgie. So he's got himself a nice little stall team here, attempting to abuse Cacturn and Sandvale to the fullest. 
Fire Punch coming down on Skarm, 30%. Doesn't get the 20% burn thanks to Serene Grace. And Spikes are reestablished. One layer, two layers. Wish. Not sure who he wants to pass that to. Let's check. Cacturn's healthy. Vaporeon's healthy. Could be the clay doll, but he didn't actually end up switching at all. He probably stayed in Fire Punch, didn't get it off, and the spikes have been reestablished for Loden. So both players with three layers right now in this 6-5 to five situation. Toxic is going to crucially connect with the CAC turn there. 85 base accuracy, even worse because of Sandvale, but it's going to connect, and Cacturn is basically ruined now. He is not going to be able to substall anybody out because of that Toxic, so that was a huge turn favoring a Loden. Celebi is going to come in here to a Leech Seed. That's a free switch-in. There have been a free, a few free switch-ins for both players throughout this game, and Moltres comes in for Georgie, so he does have Veil, but he does not have Double Veil. No Gligar this day, and he may roar away this Celebi, or just attack it. But he goes for Roar, had a good chance there to either kill the Tar or get Spikes damage on something. Dugtrio also would not like that because he's at 25%, but he did roar out one of the immune pokes. Nevertheless, Claydol makes his reappearance. Rapid Spin going to be blocked here by sacrificing Tower, and Aloden may or may not have a spinner of his own here in Starmie. Either way, the Claydol is threatened by the potential of Hydro Pump. However, he doesn't want a Hydro Pump into Vaporeon. He also doesn't want a Thunderbolt into the Doll and have a Rapid Spin come down here. So now, <laughs> Georgie in the battle, going to bust out the damage calculator. Not even going to do it privately in a new tab. He's going to do it right here. He's going to check it out. Uh, I think the answer is, I mean, certainly it can't survive a Hydro Pump. I think what he's really checking here is, can he survive a Surf? And that depends on the EVs of both. He would not take the Surf very well, I can tell you that, but... Hydro Pump is a certain kill should he go for that, but I mean, this is very scary for Georgie. If he tries to anticipate the water move, goes to Vaporeon, comes in, steps on Spikes, gets Thunderbolted, he gets rocked. So this is a difficult turn for Georgie. Starmie is very much the last poke that Aloden wants to have in this situation. An off-star in this game is very, very threatening. It would kill Moltres. Uh, the Cacturn on its own is basically dead because of the Toxic and the Spikes. It's not going to be all that healthy. That was a very good turn. Uh, assuming it does, in fact, have Thunderbolt, then Vaporeon's going to be in trouble. And certainly Claydol doesn't beat it either. He's going to go for it. He's going to switch Vaporeon in, trying to catch Water Absorb. And he does. Georgie with the balls to make that switch, and he gets rewarded for it. Now, can Elode and Punish, however, because Vaporeon no way can kill Starmie here. So the real question, is there Thunderbolt? And if there is, what can Georgie do about it? There is Thunderbolt, and there is Wish. He's going to try to stall the Starmie out. He doesn't have too, too much else to do. Alternatively, he could try to pass the Wish to the Claydol here. That's risky business for a Loden. He could Hydro Pump into the Claydol, but he could also simply Hydro Pump, which has limited PP to begin with, into the Vaporeon, which is obviously not what he wants to do. So Celebi comes in, and it's going to be toxic from Georgie, trying to put the Starmie on some kind of a clock, but instead he's going to catch the Celebi on the way, and that was a pretty good play. Georgie has multiple times this game not been afraid to take risks and make predictions. There's Recover, and there is Wish. Once again, there is the threat of passing that to the Claydol. I think he could do so safely. Even if Celebi does have HP Grass or Giga Drain, it would not kill the Claydol. But instead, it's a pass to Cacturn here. Celebi simply went for the Recover. So two poisoned Grass Pokemon staring down each other. Not for long, though. Celebi out of the way with BP. Here's Skarm. There's Hidden Power. That is probably HP Dark since it was aimed at Celebi. But it's going to connect with Skarm instead. And, of course, it is going to be resisted. It's a failed protect as Georgie goes to the Claydol. This is bad for Loden. There's absolutely nothing he can do to stop the Rapid Spin. All he can do is protect again to lefties up. And he's going to fodder it. He's going to block it here. Now he's going to go to Starmie. So he actually does prevent the rapid spin. But does this get him out of it? Can he even kill the Claydol with a Hydro Pump? He uses his fodder very, very wisely to keep the spikes on the field. That was the absolute only way that he had to do that. 
That was the one and only play he could have made to prevent those spikes from being spun away. But does this solve the problem long term? Can he actually kill the 95% Claydol here? He certainly could have before when it was quite a bit weaker. But now at 95%, the Claydol may get a rapid spin off, whether Elodin likes it or not. And there is once again the threat of him simply hydro pumping into the Vaporeon as well. Both players using their timer on this critical turn. The pressure is more on Elodin because he is down a game. If he ends up being wrong and losing this game, he is going to be in the lower bracket. But should Elodin figure this puzzle out, we will go to a game three. Great Thunderbolt there. Calls the Vaporeon on the switch in. Snipes it with a crit and down that goes. That brings us to a 4-4 four to four situation. This game very close. And they have both been chit-chatting this whole time. These guys obviously know each other and pretty friendly with each other, which is cool to see. So it is now the, the Jirachi staring down the Starmie. It's not an off-star, it seems. He does have recover, but Hidden Power is going to land with a crit and almost kill the Starmie there. Starmie going to recover again. And full para kicks in for the Rachi. Rachi has shown Wish, Fire Punch, Hidden Power, Grass. If the last move is Combine, which we see that it is, Elodin may have a very difficult time dealing with this. He's going to go to Skarm. That's going to get predicted and Fire Punched and Burnt. Good for Georgie there. Pretty ideal scenario. He found everything he needed there other than a crit. And man, Elodin is in some trouble. There is the fire punch and the knockout as the Skarm goes down. I think this Rachi is going to be an issue. Celebi comes in at this point. Maybe he could get a Leech Seed off and try to hold on for dear life. But Claydol is going to come in. There is Substitute from Celebi trying to deal with this. But Georgie looks heavily ahead at this moment. There's a lot of chit-chat between the players. But I don't know what Elodin can possibly do to win this game. He's going to need just a miracle sweep with that Starmie. It could kill Moltres. It maybe can kill Claydol. It's what he's going for here. He's going to get the Starmie in behind a sub. And he is going to go for the Starmie sweep. It is his only out here. He's going to have to be get cooperative Hydro Pumps, good damage rolls, full paras on the Rachi. All sorts of stuff is going to have to go his way, but there is a theoretical path to victory here. Cacturn coming in for the fodder, trying to kill off Hydro Pump PP. I like that play. There was a great chance that Hydro Pump missed there. It might have depleted the PP. Now Rachi is going to come in on Ice Beam. Full set, now known for Starmie, does not have Rapid Spin. There are six Hydro Pumps left. That one is going to miss. Make it five. However, Rachi fully paralyzed. Cannot capitalize on the turn. This Hydro Pump connects. 33%. Wish comes down here. Starmie has discovered it is going to have a very difficult time breaking this Rachi here. However, he goes Fire Punch on the prediction. Instead of HP Grass, that doesn't pop the sub. There's Hydro Pump, 36%. Hydro Pump, he's only got three of them left. And Rachi gets the wish off. Hydro Pump misses again. It is looking very, very difficult. Approaching impossible for the Starmie to break through the Rachi here. There's the Hydro Pump. There's the wish. The full Paris have not cooperated. There is only one more Hydro Pump looking for the desperation crit that he doesn't find. Rachi does full power there, but it does not matter. Elodin is not going to be able to break this at this point. And there is the calm mind for Georgie and Jirachi. I would say that Elodin at this point is in pretty serious doo-doo. But there is the wish. Elodin desperately fishing for a Thunderbolt crit. Has not found it. Rachi calm minding up from the safety of its own wish support. And is back up to 100%. Thunderbolt 15. There's a 38% fire punch. Zapdos may or may not live another one with the sand. But it is looking bleak. Thunderbolt for the kill. Nope. Still no crit. Full power kicks in, but it is only delaying the inevitable unless he can find a critical hit. Fire Punch kicks in, comes up just short. Zapdos lives just a little longer. More crit opportunities. Doesn't find it, and there is the Fire Punch, and that is almost certainly checkmate. This Jirachi is going to be a problem for Elodin. 
Gonna go Leech Seed, gonna go Fire Punch. There is the Celebi Death. It is only the Starmie remaining against the four pokes for Georgie. And crucially, this Starmie, as we noted, is out of Hydro Pumps. Full Para kicking in here. Maybe, maybe he gets rid of the Jirachi. But the Starmie without pumps is not going to be able to get the job done here. He's going to land a Thunderbolt on the Cacturn. It's it's low. It's poisoned. Cacturn a non-issue here. There's the Ice Beam kill. HP Dark actually probably would have really hurt the Starmie there had it connected. Sandvale didn't kick in. But the bigger picture issue is this Jirachi that he cannot break. Going through the motions here to get some lefties on it. It is a tournament game. He's going to play the right way. But the Starmie just cannot break this Jirachi without its Hydro Pumps. Just waiting for the game to end. There's Ice Beam, Critter, Critter Freeze. He actually does find the Freeze. And that is going to, well, it's going to do nothing because it doesn't have Boom. But he does thaw out and get an Earthquake off. Doesn't have Boom here. Ice Beam takes out Claydol now. Finds a Crit. Fine. Here comes Moltres. Uh, this is probably going to live a Thunderbolt, since remember, there's no Hydro Pump there, so an HP Grass actually pending a Thunderbolt crit or a power, full power, will just end the game right here without the need for the Jirachi. But he does have the out of a crit or a power, full power, does not find it, and that is going to wrap things up. So, entertaining series as always, two games in a row, Georgie with his very unique brand of creativity and metagame defying teams that he is known for surprise value as always with this guy and it's gonna work out today he's gonna get himself the 2-0 victory and send Elodin to the lower bracket as always entertaining stuff as I knew it would be from these two players I hope you guys liked it leave me a thumbs up if you did and I will see you guys for the next set